Welcome to a Star Citizen's Hardware Guide. This guide is part two in what is now a four part series. Today, I will show you how to create your own custom shard for free using the new Game Glass Forge. In the next video releasing tomorrow, I will show you how to write a one button request landing macro script. In the final part, will be a full review of both the officially licensed Star Citizen shards and as Game Glass as a product itself. Full disclosure, the first two videos are sponsored. You can find links to these videos in the info card as well as the description. This month's ship giveaway is the Age of Saber with the auspicious red skin, a $50 Predator Mounts gift card, and two 12-month Glass Pass subscriptions. Stay tuned to the end to learn how to enter. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Game Glasses Forge, and we're starting right now. All right, so before we can start making our own custom shard, we're going to want to make sure everybody has it downloaded and everything. So the first step is to download the client. If you don't know, this is all free. So you'll need to uh, make an account, download Game Glass, and just follow the steps. It's really easy to set up. You'll also need to install the client on your tablet. So you have two things to download, the client on the PC and then the client on the tablet. And also, I would just watch through this like one minute long video to get that set up. But I'm assuming that you already have it set up from uh, here on out. Let's go ahead and open up that desktop client. Once we have the desktop client open, we want to go to my shards. So this is our shard dashboard, if you want to call it that, or shard library. The first thing we want to do here is create our very own shard. So we'll go ahead and do that. Click create shard. That opens up uh, the forge. The first thing I do when I get into here is to change the resolution. So I'm gonna go in here and type in my resolution of 1920 by 1200. If you don't know your resolution of, of your tablet, take a screenshot and then go into the settings, into your, into your photos and take a look at the metadata and it will tell you the resolution or the size of that image. And you just plug that into the information there and it adds that in for you. All right, so let's go ahead and make our first button. In order to do that, we're gonna click the insert button here at the top left hand corner. We're going to go to buttons and we're gonna pick a button that we like that kind of has a, a similar look to what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this middle button here and we're gonna assign it an action first, right? And I think my first button is gonna be a flight ready button. So we're gonna go ahead and add a key bind, click record, tap R, and there we go. We have our first our first button here. So when we click this button on our tablet, it's going to be flight ready. So the next thing we want to do is go to our inspector panel and start adding some styling. I'm going to keep the button the same size, but you, of course, are welcome to change it. You can lock the aspect ratio. I want to change the text to say uh, flight ready. And I'm going to change the colors. But before I do, that's reminded me that one good practice is to actually save common use colors that you want to use on your palette to this theming tab. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and couple of my colors over. And this will basically save you from having to continue to manually copy and paste or input that in. So what I'm going to want to do is change the background color to my highlight color. Actually, I kind of have them backwards, but it really doesn't matter. And you can put a background image in here. This is pretty cool. You can actually use this to make your button be anything. The design of it can be anything. You can make it in Photoshop if you wanted to. You can also add an icon. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to search for power and click the thicker power button. We have it on the left. We can, of course, center it, right, justify it. There's a bunch of different things that we could do here. I'm going to go ahead and change the color to black. Then under typography, we can change the font. Uh, I like this font. I think it's a pretty good one. We can make the text bold. The font color is this teal color. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to black. Uh, it has must have some effects here, but let's go to borders first. So there is a border. I'm going to make the color of this my primary color. You can adjust the radius, the size of the border. You can actually set it up to where you can have like each individual corner have a different radius, which is pretty cool. So either they can all have the same radius or different radius radiuses. So that's, that's really cool. Really good granularity there. You can, of course, with any colors, change the opacity if you wanted to. We have a text shadow, which uh, I do like the text shadow, I think, but I don't want it to be that color, obviously. We'll go ahead and set that to black. And uh, let's see if maybe clearing it, see what that looks like. Go ahead and clear it but I'm gonna go back up to font here and see if I can't make it bold. There we go, okay. 
That looks good. So there we have it. We have our flight ready button. Now I recommend to make sure you get the button styled the way you want early on so that you can copy and paste it and not have to finish your whole shard and then have to go through and change the color. So kind of get the style that you want decided early. It'll save you a lot of time and a lot of tedium. That's another thing you guys want to make sure that you do is change the on tap color. So what I would probably do is go with my primary color there so that it looks a little bit different when I tap it and change the font color. So you definitely want to make sure that you do that. We'll change the font color to black. You want to do that to these before you go ahead and duplicate all of your other ones there. All right. So that's what it looks like when you tap it. That's what it looks like when it's just not being touched. All right, so to make our next button, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one. And what that does is it basically adds a second one right on top of it. I'll move it to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the power icon so that that no longer shows. We're gonna go ahead and go to actions. I'm gonna clear out the current key bind that's in there. So then I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna tap in on the keyboard. And now we have a landing gear button. Of course, I'm gonna want to change the name to landing gear. All right, now that was pretty easy. So let's make a auto landing button. So again, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Put it over. We're going to go to actions this time. We're going to keep the key bind for in. But I'm going to change it to press. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to change this to release. And then I'm going to add a delay. So basically it allowed me to hold it down for X amount of seconds or milliseconds. I believe that you need to have at least a 300 millisecond delay for Star Citizen to recognize it as a hold. So I'm going to put 300 milliseconds there. And then I'm going to change the order of this so that the press uh, is first, delay second, and the key binding third. And done. And there we go. Now we have a auto land button. And of course we'll go through change. There we go. Auto land. Inside of here we can set up functions for what would happen if you double tap or what happens if you hold it. And these can also be done simultaneously. So you could have a button that literally does three things depending on how you touch it. So that's pretty cool. So now that we have this button open, let's briefly go over all of the actions that we haven't gotten to yet. So the first one here or the second one is a mouse click. So you can add a mouse click. It could be either left, middle or right. And of course you have the same press and release so you can uh, add a mouse click. They don't have mouse coordinates yet, but that's something that is on their roadmap. So that's, that's nice to know that that'll be coming soon. We have a mouse wheel function as well, and you could basically spe uh, specify how many clicks up or down. We also have write text. So this will basically type in text. You can put in a message here. So if you wanna have a get wrecked or good fight command, you can have it automatically tap F12, bring up your global chat, tap enter, type in the words, and then tap enter and F12 again. And you could basically have one button that'll automatically send a specified message for you. So that's pretty cool. If you have any other ideas for something that you could do with some of these, let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to know. You guys are probably gonna be more creative than me. And we've already talked about a delay. And then we have a toggle state as well. This will basically allow you to a toggle between two different states with your button. So if you didn't see it here before, but you have an on tap, I know this is kind of covered by the live feed thing there. Sorry, I didn't think that out, but you have your on tap section here and you can change what the button looks like when you tap it. So it might be necessary for you to toggle between these two. And that's what that, but what that action does. Although this is a little bit less common now that they actually have toggle switches in the game. So that's, that's what we'll, we'll get. To, we'll talk about that in a second. Then we have sound effects, which I'd recommend adding some sort of a sound effect to yours so that you could just have that feedback to know that you've actually pressed the button. So the most common one here is probably this button sound here. And again, I would change the volume if you don't like how loud it is. Change the volume now before you start copying and pasting these buttons across your whole shard. But you can look through these and figure out which uh, buttons you like. S custom sound effects, I believe, are coming soon. So, yeah, that sounds a lot better. So then next up, we have go to URL. Go to URL is a powerful one. You can actually put in urkel.games. And when you click the button, it'll open up urkel.games on the tablet. You can navigate through it. You can close it out and get right back to your shard. That's really cool. Also, if you have uh, multiple shards, 
you can actually have a go to shard button. So when you click a, a button, it'll take you to a different shard. So if you're a, a multi shard user, it's nice to add some auxiliary buttons at the top that you can use to switch to and from your favorite shards, which is pretty cool. So go ahead and just set set that to pilot, for example. And yeah, I mean, so really the sky's the limit with this as far as like the macros are concerned. So clearly there's plenty of different actions here, a good playing field for people to get creative. All right, so I'm gonna clear out some of the stuff that I don't actually need for this button here. I do want a sound effect. I want it to be 50%. All right, so there we go. We got our auto land button. Next, we're gonna insert a toggle. This is one of our favorite switches. So we can insert a toggle. I love this design, but I think for this one, we'll kind of go with a matching toggle to these. So go ahead and just make that the same size there. And this actually has similar color scheme to what I already have. I'll just leave it be for now, but you could change the colors if you want. You have some different options down here. Show switch border, switch to full width, full height and show active effect. And of course you can change the background image to it. And this is basically allows you to make your button look like whatever you want. Give you a picture of Chris Roberts if you want to do. All right, so let's take a look at our actions here for the toggle. As you can see, the actions are the same, identical to the button. The only difference is, is that instead of the double tap, we have a toggle on and toggle off state. So let's make another landing gear button, but this time it'll be a landing gear toggle. So go ahead and add in, and then we'll go to toggle off, keybind add in. And then on hold is automatically has this toggle between on and off states. Basically the, again, on is the active state. The other one is just, is a second one. So what'll happen is you might get your toggles desynced from what's actually happening in the game. So in order to resync it, you could just press and hold it and it will reset the state of the button without actually doing a command. And that's automatically set, which is really good because I, I would have otherwise recommended you to add this to all of your toggles. All right, so there we go. Now we have our toggle button here for landing gear, but the problem is, is that it doesn't have a label. We're gonna go to text labels. We'll pick a kind of a design that we like. I'll go with the plain white label, place it on top and all this. There we go. So next I'm going to go ahead and talk about our next interactable for you glass pass users. So you do need to have glass pass to unlock these hero components. And I'm going to go ahead and switch accounts now to my paid account. So I could show you guys that. Okay. We'll go into this test chart here to edit it. So we'll go ahead and insert, we'll go to hero components and we'll add all three of them actually. So real quick, these four hero components, you have your flight ready, which you just click this, the ship goes flight ready, turns on everything for you. And as you turn them off, shows you you're no longer flight ready and you can turn on like your individual ones. Uh, this does desync from the game quite frequently if your ship blows up, right? Because basically it powered off. So when you get back into your next ship, it will still be flight ready. And these wouldn't have been synced. The best way to, uh, f to basically get around that is to power hit the power button that will turn your ship on right and then you just hit it again and then it will be synced up then you have your power triangle here which is great you can move this to any position on this entire triangle which i like it's much better than using your joysticks if you just want to place it in a spot and let it sit there you also have your, your shields. Now this is only viable for something like that has a size three shield that actually can be, have the power push to different facings and taken from the others. So that's really, really good if you like flying those bigger ships. And then you have your uh, quantum engage, which you just hit spool that spools it. And then you slide the quantum over and quantum engage. So that's pretty cool. These are custom made by game glass. Uh, one thing I would definitely recommend doing like for this quantum one, I think the volume is really loud. So if you click a hero component, you do have some settings that you can customize. And one of them is the sound effect. So I'd go ahead and set that again to 50%. Oh, that's actually the sound effect of, of, of the spool button. And then you want to do it here as well. So set those both to 50%. You can change the sound. Back to our free account here. We have a couple more elements here that we're going to want to put in. We have panels. So panels can basically help you kind of categorize different sections of your shard. We'll go ahead and add this one here. Of course, you can resize this to be whatever size you want. And you're gonna wanna change it to uh, send to back so that it's behind those. So that's really cool. You can go in and insert, add a text label and label this, say uh, flight. Not sure what you wanna do for that there. Just showing you an example there. You can change the size of the text 
The customizability is awesome. You can really make this thing look like whatever you want. Then we have dividers, which again, serve the same purpose. They're dividers to divide up and organize your shard. And for our decorations, I'm gonna go hop back over to our paid account. And I'm gonna go to the combat shard. Combat shard has a pretty good example of what this is used for. So uh, you can basically use this to, to make these buttons for your targeting and pinning. And I think the, the best one to use, if you decide to use something like this, is to use this to put a border around a button like previous, next, or uh, subtract and add. So like if you wanna add more missiles to your volley, you can go ahead and do that there. And this basically just makes it easy for the person who's using it to understand that this is all basically the same thing adding and subtracting missiles. So that's that's pretty cool. Not really something that you have to have in your shard by any means, but I just wanted to show you that. All right, so once you have your shard to your liking, we're gonna go ahead and click save. That will save your shard. When you do this, it's gonna ask you to give it a name. I did that earlier, I named it test shard. If you wanna edit that, you could just change that here, test shard two, there we go. And we're gonna head back out to the dashboard. All right, so here's our uh, test shard here. So there's a couple things we can do. We can share this. Inside of share, we can name the shard. Let me go ahead and leave. I must not have saved it after I named it. We can add a shard description. We can add it to a collection, which I'm gonna go ahead and add it to Star Citizen. Oh, they just have all the games here. And specify what type of device it's designed for. It's designed for a tablet. Now, if you want to share your shard and you're a GlassPass subscriber, you can go ahead and check this box to share your shard there. But free users can copy their code and share it to other people to import if you'd like, uh, personally, like amongst friends. So back here on my GlassPass account, I'm gonna go ahead and click share to marketplace. And then basically if we save it, it will then automatically add it to the marketplace. We wanna make sure that your name is in their description and collection. All right, so now that we're uh, back onto my GlassPass account, let's go ahead and take a look at my personal custom shard. So this is my shard on the marketplace. There's a link down to this in the description. I've decided to add some custom bindings here that only work if you add key bindings to the game. And my request landing one requires an actual auto hotkey script to be running. So I actually explained to the person there that anything in red requires them to actually do something in the game. This request landing coming soon will actually be later on in this guide. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that in a second here. Of course, if you're logged in, you can just click this button, add the shard to your library, and it will just pop up here. And you could do that for free. You don't need to have a paid account for that. As you saw, my shard was available on my free account. And you can even still make tweaks to it too. Make sure you don't remove any of the hero components because you won't be able to put them back. So let's go ahead and edit the shard. I'll go over it really briefly. Like I said, the helmet shard is one that needs to be bound. And I think that that's actually bugged in the game right now. So that may not work at all. Uh, if, if it's no longer works in 317, I'll just remove the button and bring it back once they get that fixed. I'll go over a couple of my more complicated buttons. So if we go into actions here on this landing mode button, the action is to alt right then we have, it double taps this button. I forget what this button is. It's whatever the default binding is, but it double taps it and it lets go of alt right and it taps landing gear. Basically this resets you to SCM speed, then presses the landing gear down. That way it makes it easier for you to on approach land. And then when it toggles off, once I've landed and I'm ready to take off, then it's going to tap in and then it's going to scroll wheel the mouse all the way back up. If anybody knows a better way to do this, like let me know. It seems a little bit cumbersome. It was very easy to just keep kicking clappy until I did enough clicks to get it back up to max speed and it plays the sound again. So, so that, that's, that's really cool that you're able to do that. Adds a little bit more functionality than just literally pressing a hot key, right? It's kind of a, it's a macro as well. Then this one is my request landing, which we'll get to after I, I talk about this, but this just does the hot key for the, uh, for the auto hotkey script. To change your pip, if you'd like to toggle between two different pips, you do have to set a key binding up for that. I picked P but that, that, that's required and decreased missiles wasn't bound for me. So I had to bind that. So I, I let that be there. Also, I have like the DPS calculator, my loadouts. If you're interested in my ship loadouts, this links you to my website, which is pretty cool, galog.co. And basically you just click this button and it opens up the website in the tablet. And when you're done with the website, you close it out. So verse finder, if you need to find any type of items, you just have it right there at your fingertips and you don't have to alt tab out of the game. And I have a notice down here for everything in red requires some sort of user input. Another request that people have ask is that they don't want to use the color scheme that I have. You can actually go through and change them. I am now not using my, my design buttons. I'm using the ones that come with Game Glass with the Forge. So you can change the colors of all of these buttons. 
Just note that any changes you make to my shard will deviate and you'll basically be on a different fork. If you want to see any updates that I make, uh, there's a couple things. Stay in touch on the channel Discord. Uh, I keep a post about any updates that I make to my shard on the channel Discord. And basically what you need to do is just remove the shard and then add it back and it will add, add whatever updates that I've made. But you can be notified with it there on the channel Discord. I hope you enjoyed this Game Glass Forge tutorial. This month's ship giveaway is the Aegis Saber with the Auspicious Red Skin a $50 Predator Mounts gift card, and two 12-month Glass Pass subscriptions. There are 10 ways to enter, each giving you more points and a greater chance to win. To enter, just visit subliminal.gg giveaway. Pro tip, the Redeem Twitch channel points rewards can be done once per live stream. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending out for you we see in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminal.gg to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership liking and subscribing goes a long way. But until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.